mightily by our press, 36. Trump also said, there's nothing that I can think of that I'd rather do than have Russia friendly as opposed to the way they are now, right now. And in response to a question about whether he would recognize Crimea as Russian territory and consider lifting sanctions, Trump replied, we'll be looking at that. Yeah, we'll be looking, 37. During the press conference, Trump repeated, I have nothing to do with Russia, five times, 38. He stated that the closest he came to Russia was that Russians may have purchased a home or condos from him, 39. He said that after he held the Miss Universe pageant in Moscow in 2013, he had been interested in working with Russian companies that wanted to put a lot of money into developments in Russia, but it never worked out, 40. He explained, frankly, I didn't want to do it for a couple of different reasons, but we had a major developer that wanted to develop property in Moscow and other places, but we decided not to do it, 41. The Trump Organization, however, had been pursuing a building project in Moscow, the Trump Tower Moscow project, from approximately September 2015 through June 2016. And the candidate was regularly updated on developments, including possible trips by Michael Cohen to Moscow to promote the deal and by Trump himself to finalize it, 42. Cohen recalled speaking with Trump after the press conference about Trump's denial of any business dealings in Russia, which Cohen regarded as untrue, 43. Trump told Cohen that Trump Tower Moscow was not a deal yet and said, why mention it if it is not a deal, 44. According to Cohen, at around this time, in response to Trump's disavowal of connections to Russia, campaign advisors had developed a party line that Trump had no business with Russia and no connections to Russia, 45. In addition to denying any connections with Russia, the Trump campaign reacted to reports of Russian election interference in aid of the campaign by seeking to distance itself from Russian contacts. For example, in August 2016, foreign policy advisor J.D. Gordon declined an invitation to Russian ambassador Sergei Kislyak's residence because the timing was not optimal in view of media reports about Russian interference, 46. On August 19th, 2016, Manafort was asked to resign amid media coverage, scrutinizing his ties to a pro-Russian political party in Ukraine and links to Russian businesses, 47. And when the media published stories about Page's connection to Russia in September 2016, Trump campaign officials terminated Page's association with the campaign and told the press that he had played no role in the campaign, 48. On October 7, 2016, WikiLeaks released the first set of emails stolen by Russian intelligence agency from Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta, 49. The same day, the federal government announced that the Russian government directed the recent compromises of emails from U.S. persons and institutions, including from U.S. political organizations, 50. The government statement directly linked Russian hacking to the releases on WikiLeaks with the goal of interfering with the presidential election and concluded that only Russia's senior most officials could have authorized these activities based on their scope and sensitivity, 51. On August 11th, on October 11th, 2016, 
Podesta stated publicly that the, Fe- the FBI was investigating Russia's hacking and said that candidate Trump might have known in advance that the hacked emails were going to be released, 52. Vice presidential candidate Mike Pence was asked whether the Trump campaign was in cahoots with WikiLeaks in releasing damaging Clinton-related information and responded, nothing could be further from the truth, 53. After the election, Trump continues to deny any contacts or connections with Russia or that Russia aided his election. This is section four. On November 8th, 2016, Trump was elected president. Two days later, Russian officials told the press that the Russian government had maintained contacts with Trump's immediate entourage during the campaign, 54. In response, Hope Hicks, who had been Trump campaign spokesperson, said, We are not aware of any campaign representatives that were in touch with any foreign entities before yesterday when Mr. Trump spoke with many world leaders. 55. Hicks gave an additional statement denying any contacts between the campaign and Russia. It never happened. There was no communication between the campaign and any foreign entity during the campaign. 56. On December 10, 2016, the press reported that U.S. intelligence agencies had concluded that Russia interfered in last month's presidential election to boost Donald Trump's bid for the White House, 57. Reacting to the story the next day, President-elect Trump stated, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's just another excuse, 58. He continued that no one really knew who was responsible for the hacking, suggesting that the intelligence community had no idea if it's Russia or China or somebody. It could have, it could be somebody sitting in a bed someplace, 59, the president-elect.